Mark Hill from Green Leaves. So today I'm announcing that I've bet £100 against the Green Party's campaign for a people's vote, a second referendum. And I've done that because although I haven't got confidence that we won't face a people's vote, I think that is a serious threat and I'm opposed to it, the odds are absolutely fantastic that you get if you're prepared to put some money on it. Um, so I will provide a link to a betting site um, in the uh, uh, text below which will show you how you can do the same thing um, but ultimately the odds come down to this. If you're prepared to put down £100 as I have uh, then you will earn £400 profit and your £100 back if we leave the European Union by the 29th of March this year, so that's just over two months time, and by leave the European Union, uh, they mean that the uh, uh, 1972 European um, Act is successfully repealed by the action of the subsequent Withdrawal Act, and that process isn't halted or that there isn't an extension to Article 50. Now, I think this matter is absolutely up in the air, but five to one, hey, these are good odds. And uh, if I have to lay down 100 pounds now with the prospect of earning 400, I'll be able to finance a really decent um, uh, party or event to celebrate the fact that we'll have left the European Union. After so many years of campaigning, many people don't realise how long the campaign has been in gestation for this one. For me, probably 1998, 1999. Although I did vote against the uh, European Union back when I was 11 in 1975 in our school referendum. That was the first opportunity I ever had to vote against the EU and uh, I did it then. Uh, now, the reason why I feel I can have faith in uh, the politicians to ultimately do the right thing even though it's going to take an awful lot of pressure and lots of further campaigning and more videos from me probably is um, because democracy works and I, I, I've been recently reminded of that by an excellent blog which I've um, already tweeted about and I will again put another link to uh, by my friend Sebastian who tweets at the Blue Anchor and he points out that there have been more votes on this issue in the recent past than on any, any, other, his, any other issue in history. Um, and he recounts them. So in 2013, uh, he promised, uh, David Cameron promised this in his uh, manifesto for the 2015 general election, uh, which he subsequently won. Uh, Parliament then voted on the proposed referendum and although there's some holdouts like Ken Clark, ultimately everybody was persuaded that the Tories had won the general election and therefore the, their mandate should be carried out. And it was approved, the referendum bill was approved by a stonking 544 to 53 and that of course included uh, the Greens. Um, who'd also similarly called for a referenda in the past, although I think not quite at the 15 uh, yeah, I think that it was at the 15 um, uh, election it was mentioned in our manifesto. It was certainly mentioned in the 2010 one. Um, then there was a, uh, a referendum. And of course the referendum in 2016 had the highest turnout of, uh, of, of any electoral contest ever. Uh, 17 and a half or so million people voted to leave versus 16.1 million people voting to remain. Uh, then there was the uh, Gina Miller legal action, which made sure that Parliament was required to actually exercise Article 50, and they gave the government the power to do that, again by a, a, a significant majority, 498 to 114, slightly higher no vote on that occasion. Newly elected um, Conservative leader uh, then <laughs> went to the country in 2017, and uh, I think it was about 85% of the electorate in that uh, general election voted for either the Labour Party or the Conservative Party that had promised to implement the uh, uh, results of the referendum. 
Uh, so essentially they all voted to leave as well. And then Theresa May um, then came back to the Commons with a dreadful deal. And that dreadful deal was rightly rejected by the Commons, again by a stonking 432 to 202 majority of 230, unprecedented government defeat for a stupid deal which essentially bound us into the EU. Customs Union. Not forgetting the issue of the backstop and you know Northern Ireland border and all the rest of that, the the, the problems with the the uh, Theresa May deal are still manifest. They are uh, the, 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 the 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 fact that it was tied into the European Union. We don't get a vote or representation in the manner in which the Customs Union will uh, bind us. Uh, we have to pay £39 billion pounds for the privilege of this deal and as a result of this deal other countries won't, won't, won't want to do trade treaties with us because we will have no regulatory flexibility to allow their products in. The people will instead go to Brussels and do a deal with them if they want to trade with the UK. Essentially they will do that by making an agreement with Jean-Claude Junkers. So Sebastian comes to the remarkable conclusion <laughs> Where are we after all of this debate and de voting? Five years later on, for all the histrionics, we're actually in quite a decent position. What's happened is that we have decided that we here in the UK, using Parliament, which everybody despairs of, but nevertheless, Parliament will get the right to debate and discuss these very powerful tra trade treaties on services and goods for sure, but also labour, capital, VAT, duties, tariffs, quotas, fair trade policies, environmental protection on goods that we import, um, uh, live animal exports and all sorts of things that unexpectedly turn up in trade treaties that we wouldn't have really expected to be a pure trade issue. And these powerful treaties will now be accountable in the same way as the withdrawal process has been accountable. And for all of the histrionics, actually that's not a problem so much as a solution. And therefore we should leave on the 29th of March. And he, in trusting the, the democratic process, has reminded me that actually, in many ways, the British electorate and the Commons, despite our concern about them, and all of this debate, and all of the media, and all of... It's actually produced a good result, in that we are now leaving cleanly, and it has all been democratically approved and legal. The only thing that can overturn it is the passing of one of these amendments, the most serious of which is the Cooper Amendment on Tuesday uh, of this coming week. Um, now, while I'm not confident that the Cooper Amendment will be overturned, and I'm not confident that I'm going to therefore eventually be on the winning side in this campaign, there is a lot left to do. Still, five to one odds, I mean, that's pretty good. That would finance a decent party.